Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to chapel this morning. I think that this is my first chance to say Happy New Year. It's the 17th already and here we are halfway through the month and I haven't got a chance to see you all all together in one place, so Happy New Year. We're going to start this morning with a song uh, and I want you to stand up for that and sing out. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit.
let's pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Our Bible reading for today is from the New Testament book of Titus. And Titus was the name of a man who was a follower of Jesus, and he wrote down these words to instruct other Christians about what it means to actually live as and to follow Jesus. We're going to talk about it a little bit together today. Notice at the beginning of the verse all of kind of the negative things that are listed out there and then how we overcome those in the second half of the verse. Remind them, Titus writes, to be submissive to rulers and authorities, to be obedient to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others, and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to talk to you today about that Bible verse, and I thought one of the ways we could do that, maybe get at it, is if we play the opposite game. You know the opposite game? I'll show you a word, and then you just call out what you think the opposite of that word is. Can we try it? All right, here's the first word, disrespectful. What's the opposite? That was easy. How about another one? Disobedient. Mm, That makes sense. Next, bad. Next, gossip. That one's a little trickier, isn't it? Gossip is talking bad about somebody. So what would be the opposite of gossip? Talking good about, talking good about somebody. All right, next, quarrelsome. Oh, yeah, the opposite, not quarrelsome. Can you think of another way of saying it? Peaceful right? Getting along with one another. The opposite of quarrelsome is when you you have peace and harmony. Next, harsh. Soft, that's good. Or maybe kind. To be opposite of harsh would be kind. What? Next, rude. Polite, did I hear somebody say? The opposite of rude is to be polite. Next, foolish wise. That's better. Yeah. Next, lost. Found. That was easy. Next, slave. Free. Good. Finally, one more. Mean. Nice. Yeah. I think that's the last one. Or is there another? Oh, angry. Yeah. Happy or joyful. Hate. Love. Oh, there they all are. Disobedient, disrespectful, bad gossip, quarrelsome, harsh, rude, foolish, lost, slave, mean, angry, hate. Now, have any of you, leave that up there, would you please? Back up. Back up. There it is. All right, so I wonder, have any of you ever been working on the computer, maybe in the classroom or at home, and have everything just freeze Man, it won't, it won't do anything. None of the buttons work. The mouse doesn't work. The screen won't do anything. The whole thing just shuts down. Now, that happens on the cell phone sometimes too, right? How about, I'm not familiar, but you all are. What about with video games? Does that ever happen on a video game console where they just stop 
for some reason and they won't go again. All right, so here's the big question for today. What is the universal solution when a computer or a cell phone or a game freezes? Shut it down. Turn it off. Reboot. Restart. Now, I want you to think about all of those opposites that you did because you see, here's what happens to us as people is we have these kinds of things that happen every day with our friends, with our parents, and at some point in time, it's just like we get froze up. We just seize up because of all of that stuff that's inside of us. But I wonder if you know that God actually installed a restart button for your life. He actually did. He put in a reboot button, a shut down and start over button. It's in this Bible verse. Let me show you. When the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not by anything we ever did, but according to His own mercy. Now look what I have underlined. By the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit which he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior so that being justified by his grace we might be heirs according to the hope of eternal life but look at that underline by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit what does that remind you of when were you washed when was water put on you call it out in your, in your baptism, right? Now, St. Luke's has a very wonderful reminder of baptism every time you come in at least by the front door or you walk in past that area. And that baptismal font is a way to remind you of your baptism. Now, I wonder if you ever noticed that in the top of the baptismal font, there is the shape of a cross, Right, a little short top and bottom, but the shape of a cross. And on the one side, a waterfall pouring out of the cross is the water of your baptism. And then it goes down into that bottom pool, and that same water comes up through the baptismal font, and then it pours over the edges of the baptismal font so that when that water is put on you, you become connected to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. We believe that there is a miracle of God that occurs in baptism where you become connected to Jesus' death and resurrection. And there, my friends, is your reboot. That's your restart. And although you only get baptized once... Your baptism is something that you can use every single day. I think God was incredibly clever that he connected your reboot, your restart, to the most common element on the planet. Tell me any place that you can go where you don't see, taste, touch, and here in Slavia, Florida, even smell the water when the irrigation systems are running you can smell the sulfur and the water you see i think what god meant to do was every single time you saw a drop of water you would think oh i was baptized into jesus death which washes away all of the those things that we had the opposites of up there on the screen and it makes me brand new today one of the ways that, that I have tried to practice that in my life is when I take a shower, right? And I know what comes out of the end of that shower head, do you? Water. And when I see water, what do I think of? Baptism. And you know what I say? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then I go, whoosh, there goes all my sins down the drain. And then I step out of the shower. You have to close your eyes for this part. I step out of the shower, right? And I think today is the first day 
of the rest of my life. Today I am rebooted. Today I am restarted. Today is a new day for me to live in the way that God created me to live, that wonderful list of opposites, the opposite of all those negative things that we looked at. Will you do this for me today? Here's your assignment, right? Every, all day today, whenever you take a sip of water from the drinking fountain or you go into the bathroom and you wash your hands and you feel that water, will you say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I'm baptized. Can you do that for me? You, right? you can say it to yourself. Don't disrupt your classrooms. Okay? Don't get in trouble. Don't say, well, Pastor Arp told me to. Right? But think about it today. Let's practice it together. When you see water, what are you going to do? Say it with me. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I'm baptized. Let's do it one more time. Ready? In the name. You got it. All right. Let's uh, bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we rejoice that you have given us the forgiveness of all of our sins by connecting us to Jesus' death on the cross. We get a reboot. We get a restart. Every time we remember our baptism, help us to remember it every time we see water and to think of it as a way of changing and doing life the way that you created us to do life. Now bless us, be with us today, watch over any of our students who are struggling in any way or families with any uh, health issues or problems and grant healing where it's needed. Uh, keep everyone safe and teach us to live as your people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, stand up. Let's say together the Apostles' Creed as a statement of what we believe. I believe in God. Y'all may be seated. We're going to receive our offerings now. If uh, the class representatives would please come forward and the acolytes will collect the offerings. Let's pray together the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's sing.
trust the promise You will carry me safe to shore Good morning. Go ahead and sit down. Uh, This Saturday here at St. Luke's, our JV girls are playing in the Metro League tournaments. If you get a chance, come out and watch them play. They start at 9 o'clock. This week's Student Athlete of the Week is from our girls' varsity team. She's helped the team to a 14-1 record. Uh, She plays our slasher position, which is when it attacks the basket a lot. And on defense, she's our second leading rebounder. This week's Student Athlete is Maddie Love. Good morning, Wildcats. Before we get started with the Doers Award, we have a very special thank you I'd like to share with you. So Redeeming Life, which received the gifts from our last month's chapel offering, wrote you a letter. So maybe it's two months ago. So it says, Dear students, wow, you are amazing young people. Look what God has done and is doing because of you. The gifts you gave in December, chapel for the mothers and babies that live in Redeeming Life, touched us deeply. During a time of the year when so many are focused on what they are getting, you gave to people in need. How faithful of you. The items you receive, like paper towels, baby wipes, and toilet paper, may not sound very exciting to you, but to our moms and babies, it shows love and mercy. It shows Christ, and most exciting, the most exciting thing we could ever get. Thank you all for your generosity and your loving gifts. From the heart, well done, good and faithful servants. With love and gratitude, Cheryl and the entire family at Redeeming Life. So we just want to share it with you. Great job, people. All right, our first doer is from Miss Blank, 3C. Mark, helping a friend with the kindness and acceptance. Mark, for caring, responsible, and service. Great job. Gloria Lindemann. Where's Gloria? (laughs) Go Wildcat. Great job, ma'am. Right there. Next up, from Mrs. DeLemos, 1A, being a responsible first grader, marked for responsibility, great job, young Maddie Schmick, where's Maddie? <laughs> Maddie! Woo! Go Wildcats! Great job, Maddie. Next up, from Miss Bailey, marked for caring, respect, knowledge, responsibility, service, Excellent participation during the exam reviews. Great job, Lorelai Herrera. Where's Lorelai? Go Wildcat. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Remember now, getting that perfect picture in your mind, right? That perfect setup. Okay, good job up here. Next up from 2B, Mrs. Schultz. Excellent work with being able to quickly and accurately identify pronouns. Mark four. Knowledge. Great job. Billy Marlar, where's Billy? Yeah, there's Mr. Excitement. Woo-hoo. Go on, Cap. All right, all right. Great job, Billy. Nice job, young man. Next up from Mrs. Nowicki. All right, 5B. Help. <laughs> nice touch there, Mr. Pryor. 
helping set up the outdoor classroom for Ms. Nowicki's staff walkthrough. Great job. Mia Layette Vidal, where's Mia? Good morning, ma'am. Go out, Pat. Great job. Next up, KB from Miss Lucas. Ooh, setting a great example at our patriotic salute practice. Mark for patriotism, responsibility. Diego Aguilar, is Diego? Diego. Congratulations. Wowzer, great job. Next up from Mrs. Knobloch. Mark for caring, courtesy, generosity, responsibility, and service for always volunteer for whatever's needed to make the class work efficiently. Great job, Mr. Gavin Hurt. Where's Mr. Hurt? Go Wildcats. Try again. Try again. Go Wildcats. Try one more time. Just a little, little something more. Go Wildcats. Okay, perfect. <laughs> that last one hit it. That was perfect. Is there any more? Okay, perfect. All right. It's our last student doer of the week. Very polite and respectful, great student from Ms. Follett, 4B, marked for respect and responsibility. Great job, Ethan. Fairchild. Yeah. Great job, Ethan. Great job, sir. Boom. Go Wildcats. Good job, Ethan. Thank you, young man. And he's in 4B. This one is, in, this is respect is infinity plus five. We'll figure that out in a minute. Responsibility is infinity plus four. Compassion is, is infinity plus five. Integrity is infinity plus four. And reverence is infinity plus five. From Isabella to 4B, Miss Follett. Come on, Miss Follett. <laughs> Boom. Go Wildcats. Thank you, ma'am. Great job, young man. All right, after Mr. Hall gets the perfect picture, parents, you can sneak on down. Big smiles, doers. Come on now. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Look up, Billy. You got big smiles coming. We'll tie it in a minute. Look up. There you go. Big smiles. All right. One more round of applause for our doers this week. Great job. Have a seat. Great job, buddy. All right. So we're sitting in chapel families. So again, middle schoolers, do a good job with your families. Keep supervising. At this point, my kindergarten and first grade teachers to go ahead and hop up on the side. So at kindergarten over here, first grade teachers only, teachers only moving. And kindergarten and first grade students, remember we always have two rules. We have walking feet and your eyes forward. So right now, walking feet, eyes forward, go find your teachers. Nice job. Everybody's nice and safe. Perfect walking feet. Boom. Boom. 